хату, поки я на кого не кет. Тримаю! Тримай, тримай, брат! Зараз! Добре! Тримай, So we're currently here with Olga and Andy, who are humanitarian workers and military trainers in Ukraine. And you can always pull it tighter. Feel the difference there? What they're doing at the moment is training a territorial defense unit, so a local militia, in how to put on a case. We train soldiers. We get requests from commanders that will have new recruits. We make sure, again, we teach them how to stay alive first. Before we do anything else. But it's a war. There's no niceties in this war. There's atrocities being committed left, right and centre. They're not part of the Geneva Convention. It's whatever goes, goes. We're Vans Without Borders, a humanitarian aid team who delivers essential aid and supplies to struggling civilian communities on the front line. And in our team, we have... Henry, Louis, Jan, Kieran. We also have Justin Ukraine Aid, who we partner up with, a great guy who helps sponsor some of the aid we deliver. And a huge thanks to Brian and Matt for helping us drive over this trip. If you're prepared for the worst, everything else is easy. Andrew and Olga do a bit of everything. They're very much problem solvers over in Ukraine. If anyone has an issue, people contact them and ask them for help. And that's the Ukrainian army, other charities, other humanitarian groups. We train volunteers when they come into the country. We realise that everyone wants to go somewhere interesting. But if you don't know what happens when you get hit by a drone or you drive over a landmine, then you're going to die. Then we're going to get called to go and recover your bodies. It's a hard thing for us to do. We don't want them to be injured. We don't want their vehicles to be disabled. If we can just teach people that this is not a holiday. So what we try to do with volunteers is teach them how to stay alive. In Andrew's world, he'd rather not do all the aid and focus solely on the army training, but there is no one else to do it. So he's very much stepped up to that challenge to take over humanitarian aid distribution over in Ukraine. They don't have days off, they work tirelessly to ensure aid gets distributed, and they're the people we send our large aid shipments to. But they also train the Ukrainian army before they go to the front. Can they shoot a rifle safely? Can they advance safely? Can they keep them and their comrades alive with the tourniquet and medical training. So Andrew and Olga really pick up the slack and ensure that people going to frontline areas or even people manning checkpoints have the necessary skills they need to keep their fellow soldiers alive. What, are they being punished for? No, he just uh, tried to joke. Yeah, we don't joke. This is serious. We take training seriously. We do not mess about. We don't have a laugh and a joke. I want them to believe that the training is real because it's not like the British Army we're at home training for something that may happen. They're already at war. Tighten it, then if I need to, I can wilt it here. So a lot of these guys are volunteers. They don't receive any military training and are really at the mercy to get trained by people volunteering their time to do so. So it's incredible actually to watch firsthand. So we'd been on the Zero Line delivering water pumps for an American charity and we were both saying we need to go. I've been big stress about yeah, that. Yeah, we were stressing on it because the vulnerable targets. Why not kill a few volunteers? Make other volunteers not come. And as we were going through one of the villages at Baroslav, we were cleared for the area. We were told it was safe. We were driving through. And I turned around to Olga and I said, I don't think so something's wrong. Something's not right. Put your seatbelt on. And I gunned the gas. I shot forward and as we did, the drone hit the side of the vehicle, the bomb went off. The armoured vehicles and everything that were with us, uh, they didn't target, they targeted us. But we were already going down the road, the windows had gone through, the shrapnel had pierced the rear, but with an ambulance it's quite well insulated, so the shrapnel from the drone. Uh, Olga had reached over to put a seatbelt on, the glass had shredded and hit our faces so it stunk. I asked her, check yourself, make sure there's no bleeding. She's checked herself, she had her armour on, uh, I had mine on. Um, there was no, 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 no trauma. Yeah. She checked me while I was driving, I already had done a quick pat down. She said, don't touch your face, there's fine glass 
on our faces, I can feel it. Do not touch it, rub your face. We took the whole length and breadth of the whole ambulance, took a hit. The soldiers saw it happen. They, were, they thought we were dead or injured. You can see the holes, the, the, the ambulance took the, the, the energy out of the explosion. We're lucky that it was an ambulance and not a car or a van. We'd have been injured. If we hadn't have moved, it would have hit the front of the vehicle. We would have been in serious trouble. A couple of weeks later, we were checking our gear, ready to go somewhere else. Yeah. And Olga went, oh, and noticed there was some fragments in her body armour. Yeah. And then she took this, a closer uh, look. Has been like was there here. on her heart. And I'll bring it closer to the camera for you. And the fragment had hit the the fragment had hit the metal bar and then and pierced and stopped on the tourniquet. So the tourniquet saved her life even without her using the tourniquet. Can't remember whether you're one or two. Welcome to Ukraine. Come on, sold that go for wrong. Perše z lewo od mnie, trochę z prawo od mnie. So we're currently on our way to Kravatorsk to go and see Dima, the man with Down syndrome who's still begging outside the supermarket, giving us some food. It's nice to check up on him and see that he's doing okay. And then we're going to be going down to some villages around the front line to help those who are still stuck there and literally have nothing. This whole region of Donbass basically is being hammered hard by the Russians because I think they're preparing for a new assault. So we're not going to be hanging around for too long. Mate, I went in there. I had food in there. Was that the pizza shop? Oh, mate. We managed to supply villages around Milova. We aimed to go down to Chazivyar, but what was quite sad is we thought there would be a lot of people there, and um, what seems to have happened is the Russian front line has moved up. So there was some sort of skirmish there, which wasn't reported in the news, but there was evidence of a battle or um, a skirmish being fought there, and landmines were everywhere, and there were zero people. Oh, that's a f***ing landmine right there. Where? Yeah. Under that truck. See it? There's one right there as well. Yeah, get on the centre of the road. Centre of the road. Get on the centre of the road, you nearly road. ran over a landmine. Yeah, I'm not going any further down here. Look, there's there's more, yeah. So this was a community we had before where there was maybe 200, 300 people, including very young children, and now all of those houses were bombed or destroyed and there are landmines just everywhere, which is, you know, incredibly sad. Probably about 50 to 100. You know, what's happened here? They've just been hammered. Which I've Just a year ago. Look. Might be a landmine here, we're unsure. Yeah, just don't think you don't. Yeah, it's a bit... A bit more f since we were last here. Yeah. It's a lot worse than it was before. There's the memorial we're talking about. Yeah. We parked here before. Yeah, well, it's a trench now. Jesus Christ, what's happened here? These were the houses we had before. So we were last here maybe about six months ago. And again, it's a complete ghost town now. Yeah, man. What happened then? Tailgate shattered to the roads. What the f happened? So, just driving out of Kalanina, it's a complete ghost town compared to when we were here last November. It's, it's heartbreaking to see that this whole community, it was about 200 people still here, are now gone. The Russians have come in and they've landmined it. Um, there's landmines everywhere, um, which is disgusting because it means that if anyone comes back looking for their families, then they're going to be injured or killed by this. It's, it's a complete act of terrorism. It's not even one person here. We had a look around all our usual areas and no, no one's here. It's shocking to see how this war has just destroyed communities and with the destruction of the buildings, people aren't going to come back here. You know, this is this is akin to genocide. And, but we were still with mission, still successes, even though we didn't help the people we set out to help. Um, there was a village slightly further back which we were able to help um, and they are now the new front line as such. Thank you for Goldie for stealing this from the HMRC. It's vintage, 2004. <laughs> from there we went back to Kramatorsk. So this is our accommodation for this evening. Uh, very kindly put up by a, another humanitarian volunteer who's out here in Kramatorsk. There's no hotels or hostels in Kramatorsk, they're fully booked up by the army. 
and so this is what we're doing for dinner. Looking forward to it, Louis. Oh yeah. Back on Tuesday. So it's Louis' birthday, and we found the only cake in Krematorsk. Happy birthday! It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Louis. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> Sirens have just gone off in front of Torsk. While we were in Donetsk Oblast giving out humanitarian aid, we got a message from one of my friends in the Ukrainian army. They said they'd captured a soldier from the Donetsk People's Republic and asked if we wanted to interview him. Probably the most bizarre thing I've seen in Ukraine, he was happy he was shot by the Ukrainians because it meant it got him out of military service with the Russian army because he'd been trying to leave for a long time but his family had been threatened by the Russians so he had to stay there. Donetsk Oblast, город Yanakio. You could look in his eyes, he was 100% genuine and he just didn't really want to be there. The Russian soldier actually told us that had he made it back to the Russian lines instead of being captured by the Ukrainians, he wouldn't have received medical attention. They would have stuck him in an aid centre or a building and just waited for him to die because they haven't got the resources to treat these people. And I don't think there's actually a huge amount of will from the Russians to treat the people of Donetsk or Luhansk because they don't see them as proper Russians. They see them as useful idiots, as Vladimir Lenin would say, to push their agenda. Думаю, перевяжу, сейчас допытают и убьют. Спасибо вот ребятам, огромное, очень человеческое отношение. Я, нам такой рассказывали, пиздец, и пальцы режут, и яйца режут, блядь, и насилуют, и что только они, ну, как видите. Так как сам вижу, я, я вам честно говорю, я вчера как узнал, пропаганда работает полным ходом. The unit who captured him used part of their own budget to order in specialist medical equipment to treat this guy and put his arm in a proper arm brace. Мне давали антибиотики. Обезболивающие, кушать, конечно, курить, пить, все, отношения, никто не бил ничего. Очень хорошее, очень хорошее. It just shows that the Ukrainians, even though they have a deep hatred towards the people invading their country, they're not willing to break the Geneva Convention or take out their anger on individuals as they appreciate that a lot of people on the Russian side don't actually want to be there. So this is perhaps my favourite checkpoint. It's got a garden shed stuck a load of concrete bricks on each side of it. <laughs> we then went on to Kharkiv to an estate we've been to before. Uh, uh, that, so, uh, yeah, Shrapno. Yeah, cut it, cut it his We build a course, start a course. Like, uh, uh -huh. removed his beard and uh, uh -huh. his like, he brought Blikela or Blikela. Three Zuba. One minute. People there, though, they are very desperate because it's a very impoverished part of Kharkiv. Most of the residents are elderly. It's a lot more people down here, they're just waiting in the shade rather than standing out in the sun. So we told them we'd have enough of about 100 people. Apparently, 3,000 people live here, so there's a big old, big old queue. We gave them loads and loads of food and different bits and clothing and everyone was really happy to see us. And they actually said our van is a mythical van because last time we were there it rained and then it's been scorching out here and we turn up with the van and within about an hour it starts raining again. So it's great to see some of the same old faces as before as well as some new faces. A lot of people started moving back to the region since it's like, still being bombed a lot but since the front line has been pushed back. Uh, she's saying there's two disabled people. Oh, yeah, yeah, give her, give her a, give her a So, um, Google Maps has stopped working in Kharkiv because they jammed the signal to stop the rockets coming in. So, this is our current Google Maps. Yeah, we're heading west, which is good. <laughs> Rather be heading west than east. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> from there we went back to Kharkiv and helped a group that supports children with Down syndrome and autism in Kharkiv and it was great to catch up with those guys because last time I spoke to Lena, the founder, she was living in an old Soviet block as a flat being destroyed. Thank you very much, uh, England and uh, Ukrainian friendship. Best of the best. <laughs> but it looks like things are on the up for them since the Russians have been pushed back, which again is fantastic. Uh, these are people who live in Kharkiv. They're using a community centre at the moment as their sort of base of operations. But it's great to bring them the supplies they need because uh, they get very little help from the government. Yeah.